welcome to today's video. Um, today's video is going to be about a recent commission that I have just finished. Uh, it is my palace cat commission. And if you watch my vlogs, you'll see um, like my progress um, throughout the week on this commission. Um, so this video is going to be about how I made it. It actually has a sculpey head with some glass eyes. So a little bit different than my usual, usual one. Um, also has a ball and socket armature for the spine and actually a wire legs. Um, uh, I, I want to make a video about the different types of armatures and like the advantages and stuff, but um, that's on the to-do list. Anyway, so if you want to see how I made this palace cat, then keep watching. Okay, so as I said before, the head is going to be made of Sculpey, so I have a aluminium foil um, core, I have some pre-worked uh, Sculpey and also some glass eyes. So I like to use Sculpey Original, um, you can use Super Sculpey or Sculpey Firm, um, they're three different degrees of firmness. I prefer to use Sculpey Original um, just because I like working with softer clays um, and Sculpey Super Sculpey is that sort of skin coloured one or the beige coloured one, not skin coloured. Um, and that one is a little bit more hard, it's a little bit more firm and so you got to work the Sculpey a little bit more to make it um, malleable and then Sculpey Firm is the grey one which is quite hard to work with and I don't particularly like working with it. Anyway, so I covered the aluminium ball with the Sculpey and just sort of mapping out where I want um, all of the features of the face to be. I have some reference photos on my computer next to me so I always have reference photos when I'm sculpting um, animals and um, just to sort of get all of the proportions right and make sure the animal actually looks like the animal. Uh, so now I've placed in the glass eyes and I don't have any problem baking glass eyes in um, my oven so if you want a video about baking eyes and like my experience and stuff leave it in the comments below and I could probably make a video about that um, so I've tried quite a few different things and um, obviously this these particular eyes work for me uh, so now I am working the eye area and I wanted to get the eyes pretty pretty close palace cats have different sort of eyes so they've got round pupils and quite large eyes and they have a particular grumpy look so I wanted to capture that in the expression of this cat um, so I played around with the eyes um, quite a bit and I, I have a lot of this raw footage so in a month's time I'm opening a patreon so I wanted to put like a real-time footage of sculpting on there as well but I'll do another video separate video about patreon in when it's closer to the due date um, but yeah just to let you know I'm gonna put like more behind the scenes videos and stuff on on that patreon which is like full-length sculpting videos and stuff like that um, so then my YouTube will be more quick sort of um, briefs I guess um, and then you can get the full stuff on my patreon so here's what we have after I have sculpted everything I only added texture to the front um, bits of the face uh, because a lot of it's going to be covered in fur anyway so there's no point going ahead and furring all of the rest of the face um, but sometimes when you have areas closer to the eyes and the snout area um, the texture can come through and sometimes there's not a lot of fur on it so I, I like to sculpt the texture onto my pieces now I have baked it and it is cool and ready for painting so I've primed my areas that I'm going to paint and I do have a primer video so you can check that out on my channel and I'm just using some acrylic water based paint to paint up the areas of the palace cat so it's just basically the nose the eyes and the mouth um, there's no point painting the rest of it because I'm going to be covering it in fur anyway so don't waste your paint in painting the whole thing one thing to note with uh, using Sculpey Original um, is to be careful of what paints you use because sometimes they can affect um, the durability of the Sculpey but these particular paints from Chromacryl and Dervy and Matisse I haven't had any problems with um, so yeah just keep that in mind when using paints do a little test patch before you uh, apply it to your final sculpture 
And then going in and just filling out the um, different color of the nose. So they don't have a pink pink nose, but I wanted that as an undertone. And then I'll go over it with some red oxide paint to darken it a little bit and give it more of a brownie to ready tone. Moving on to the fur and for I, some fluke reason I had this fur in my stash and it is exactly the same as the Palace Cat's fur. Um, so I was really really lucky that I actually had this in stock. It has a little pattern underneath as you just saw when I moved the fur apart. It has like a striped pattern and that gives it the sort of speckly effect. So what I've done here is I've drawn out all of the patterns. The patterns that I make are my own sort of creation. I'm not a pattern whiz so I wouldn't be selling these patterns anytime soon. Um, but maybe in the future, I'm not too sure just yet. But there's plenty of different ways to do bodies. Um, just have a go with things and you'll find something that works for you. So I'm cutting all the pieces out using a sharp pair of small scissors um, and that way I can feed the blades in between the pile of the fur and cut the actual backing and not the pile. Um, so always something to keep in mind when using um, when cutting fur is to find something that works for you. Once all the pieces are cut out I then pin it fur side together and I like to sew it up on a sewing machine just because I find it is a lot quicker. Um, I have refined my bodies quite a lot um, so I know exactly where to sew so again it makes it quicker and is a lot more durable as well than hand sewing. So once I've sewn it all up I leave the back end open and depending on how big the feet are I usually leave the legs open as well so I can flip it the right way around. Seeing as this body the legs are quite small I left the legs open so I can you know stick them uh, flip the right way around as it is doing right here. Um, so I usually just pull it and then it comes out and then I'll poke the little leg holes, uh, legs through the holes um, and yeah I, I, I have no problem doing this so um, you'll find something that works for you though. And then once I've flipped it the right way around this is what we have and you can see how close the body fur looks like a palace cat's fur. Uh, so I, I'm so so pretty lucky to get this fur. Um, so once I've done this I make a armature depending on what body I use I've used quite a different quite a lot of different armatures now so this one has a uh, ball and socket spine and a wire leg so like I said before if you want a wire armature tutorial there is one in my shop and there's a couple of other tutorials in my shop as well that will help you start on uh, making your own art dolls and that's at creaturesofnat.com and there's five tutorials there they do come in zip folders so you'll get a pdf and you will get a video and hopefully that will help you um, start so what I just did is sewn up the legs using a ladder stitch. I also have a video on my channel on how to do a ladder stitch with faux fur. And then once I've done that, I go ahead and glue the fur to the resin uh, using a tacky fabric glue. And mine is from a local store here in Spotlight, uh, in Australia called Spotlight. Um, and I find that that's the cheapest and it works really, really well. So I'm going to stick with that for now. And I'll leave that to dry overnight and then once it is all dry I can move ahead and start furring the face and like in all my other videos I won't show how I furred it I haven't decided to do that just yet but you'll find your own way if you just give it a few um, different trials and you'll find something that works for you. So once the fur is all applied I will leave it to dry again overnight and then I go ahead and just clean up all of the face area and add any patterns and markings that need to be added. Um, I have a couple of things on my channel about the paints and pens and stuff that I use. Um, but if you have any questions or requests for a video of that, just let me know and I can make it like a dedicated video. Um, so I'm just actually cleaning up the eye area mainly because I wanted to get that just right and when you fur the face the fur sort of overtakes all of the detail so you want to put that detail back in um, and I found using um, paints and dyes and stuff to be the best way. And I also have a reference of the palace cat on my computer so I can follow the patterns um, of the face. So once I've done that I can go ahead and add any other little details so these details are the whiskers and um, I'm thinking of doing a 
whisker tutorial for my shop so in case you were wanting it would be a cheaper tutorial than the ones that I have but um, I haven't totally decided on that because it would be a short tutorial um, but I'll let you know when I decide that as well and I wanted to give you a quick look at it's got like a kind of follow me eye effect with these particular eyes which I thought were really cool so I just wanted to show you what it looked like when I was taking photos of the palace cat so this is what I have um, the palace cat all finished with the patterns and it is off flying off to its new home um, but yeah really really happy with the way this one turned out I really enjoyed doing it I always wanted to do a palace cat and I remember seeing them in Japan um, 10 years ago or so and they were really really cute so and that is it for me today guys I hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you have any video requests you can leave it in the comments down below you can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at creatures and that and I'll catch you in the next one Bye.